I'm prepared to bring out and ready to bring out the next speakers. The insurance soup. Big bowl of soup, man. Best taste in soup in the insurance industry. My good buddies, Michael McCormick and Taylor Dobby. Unbelievable dudes. When I say unbelievable dudes, I really mean it. I really, really mean it. I met, I got the pleasure of meeting them a couple years ago when I first started putting on, wanting to put on the conference. And what they don't know is having them a part of it was a huge blessing and help to me. Okay, they made me a moderator of their Facebook group, The Insurance Soup. They're just de freaking amazing guys. I don't know why they like do so much for me. You know, I want to keep doing more for them. Like that's that's a that's a mutual relationship that you want to be a part of. And I'm telling you what, the insurance suit guys are un un unbelievable. They don't realize this that a, several years ago, I would say three four years ago, I was like, man, if I could ever get my business to where I'm like rolling and doing well, like the insurance soup and this massive Facebook group and all the amazing things they have going. I'm like, I would love to meet these guys. It would be incredible. But what I didn't know is I would actually be introducing them on a virtual stage right now in front of thousands of insurance agents and I didn't expect it. They didn't know that I was thinking about them and, 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 and talking about them before we even met. Okay, and I'm blessed to know them. Unbelievable guys, they truly care. They shared how to generate Facebook leads live at, at, at the last 8%. Okay, if you don't quit, you can't fail. These dudes will never quit. Great dudes, excited to bring them out to the virtual stage. Mr. Michael McCormick and Mr. Taylor Dobby of The Insurance Soup. Eight percent. Welcome back to another presentation here in this virtual summit that we are in the middle of. My name is Mike McCormick, and with me to my left or my right, depending on how this ultimately shakes out during editing, is my better-looking, better-bearded brother from another mother, Taylor Dobby. We are the co-owners of Insurance Soup and all of the Insurance Soup brands. If you're not familiar with Insurance Soup, we are the largest community on social media for insurance agents, brokers, and team members. And we have a, a very thriving community where uh, the action is just absolutely nonstop. We're talking good, bad, and ugly in the industry all day, every day, while providing some infotainment and a number of really kick-ass and badass uh, products and services to the injury, uh, industry at the same time. So uh, all that being said, when we speak at 8% Nation, and very, and we've been very fortunate in the last number of years to uh, continue to be invited back, we make it a point to always rain value down on you guys. We wanna make sure that when you leave this virtual conference, when you leave this summit, that you have something actionable that you can go back into your agency and implement to get those registers ringing. All that being said, I am going to pass the baton over to Taylor here, and we are gonna to start to dig in and provide that value to you now. Awesome. And before we really dive in, I promise Mike and I are at least six feet apart as he's in New York and I'm in Texas. Don't let the, the brick walls behind us for you. Uh, but we're, we are limited on time compared to uh, what we normally would be, you know, standing on stage having an hour. So we want to dive right into a couple actionable items you can take back, apply, and benefit from. Uh, so we're going to go into edge rank in general, and then we're going to pass it back to Mike. I'm going to really have a segment, the audience, on Facebook. So you're staying in front of who you want to. But when it comes to Facebook edge rank, we've all heard about the algorithm. Uh, you know, this, this uh, secret formula that Facebook uses. And what edge rank really is, is it's your, your social uh, credibility when it comes to Facebook. So if I, Mike and I didn't communicate at all whatsoever, Facebook is going to recognize that and say, okay, if they're not communicating, they're not liking, engaging, commenting, sharing each other's posts, uh, then we don't want to waste spot on their timeline because they, they must not be interested with each other. Well, T Taylor, why, why, don't we, why don't we back that up a little bit and, and explain why they're picking and choosing whose content to show you on the, uh, on the platform? Because I think it'll start to make a lot more sense for people if they understand why Facebook is choosing who to showcase and who not to showcase. Uh, you know, once you understand like, the, the logistics of the why, you'll understand why getting the Ed Drank and why understanding taking, of how to take advantage of the algorithm is super important. No, absolutely. So Facebook, we all know it, it's a money-making machine. And the way that Facebook makes their money is by serving ads in your newsfeed. Uh, if you were to scroll through your newsfeed, you'll see about every three to four posts is an ad. So Facebook, in order to pay their shareholders, they serve ad, and by serving the ads, they're taking the advertisers' money. So they wanna keep you on Facebook for as long as they possibly can 
so that they can serve you as many ads as they can. They can collect those ad dollars from the advertisers and make money, uh, pay their shareholders. All in all, that's how Facebook makes their money. So the edge rank is very important to keep you on Facebook for as long as possible. So if you view your timeline as uh, you know, prime real estate, Facebook wants you to be scrolling through your timeline and engaging and staying there for as long as possible. And so that's where the secret form of algorithm kind of comes into play. So if Mike and I didn't communicate, Facebook recognizes that and says, okay, there's no interest there. We're not going to waste up that prime real estate and show Taylor Mike's post or Mike Taylor's post because they're just simply not interested. Now, if I were to start engaging on Mike's post, I start liking, commenting, sharing, uh, you know, Facebook recognizes that says, okay, they've been friends for 10 years. Uh, we hadn't really shown any of their posts to each other because they weren't interested. Now they're engaging. They've got some similarities. Uh, we're going to start showing them more and more, the more that they engage with each other. So that's why if you go through your timeline, uh, you know, your newsfeed, you'll see it's the same people that you engage with, you know, that you're seeing day after day after day. And you look back and go, man, I've been, I've been friends with Sally for, for 10 years and I don't see any of Sally's posts. And if you were to go back and look, it's because you're not engaging with Sally. So what Facebook really recognizes is, you know, the likes, the comments, the shares, but there's a couple other, uh, you know, formulas built in. Uh, you may notice that if you were to reach out to Sally on messenger and send her a message and y'all start talking back and forth there in the Facebook messenger. Now Facebook recognizes, even though it's not on the timeline where you engage, but you engaged in part of their platform, Facebook's going to start to serve you up some of Sally's posts and Sally, some of your posts. Now, the more that you engage, the more that you see each other's, uh, you know, interactions. Uh, you know, also recently, Facebook has incorporated more in, in the algorithm. Uh, any marketer, anybody out there that says they know the algorithm, one, that they're full of it. Uh, no one really knows the secret formula. But what you'll see is, uh, you know, the topics right now is a big one. Facebook is always making changes to the algorithm. And if you post a topic right now, Facebook is going to show your post to others you know, on your friends list that show interest in that same topic. So if you were to post about your high school, even though you haven't engaged with a lot of friends from your high school, they're going to show the friends on your friends list that you went to high school with that post because there's some similarities there. So there's multiple different ways to kind of manipulate the algorithm. And that's really what Mike's going to dive into uh, to make sure that you're staying in front of the right people at the right time to always, you know, pull the opportunities from Facebook as often as you can. Yeah, so, you know, Taylor just brought up two very uh, concrete ways for you to kind of make sure that you're getting in front of exactly who you want to be speaking to, uh, you know, while you're on the social platforms. You know, like you just mentioned, you can start to engage them in their messenger, and in turn, you'll start being fed their content and vice versa. And just like you also mentioned, if you are topically bringing up stuff that, uh, that is of interest to people on your friends list, then uh, Facebook will begin showing those topical posts to people that would, uh, you know, that, that have previously engaged on other posts or other content on the platform around that topic. But there's a third way that, uh, that we've been using, we've been teaching for, I mean, geez, this is the, the, this strategy that we're sharing on this one. It had to be kind of quick and super simple. So this is, this is one that we've, that we've had pretty much from the very, very beginning before we were even doing ads. Uh, this is a pure organic strategy on how to build, uh, a nice little army of potential referral partner prospects. And that is done by, uh, by creating your own, uh, your own friends lists within your friends list on Facebook. And this is something that the majority of people out there don't really know that you can do. Uh, so I'm gonna walk you through that right now. So all you need to do is you need to go home. Actually, first thing you need to do if you're not part of Insurance Soup is join. We got 31,256 members in there as of this recording. And uh, everything that we do in there is solely around the topic of insurance in the industry and everything good, bad, ugly, and in between. But uh, shameless plug over. What we're gonna do now is we are gonna go to the home screen here. And from the home screen, and I, uh, I apologize for anything that is uh, not appropriate that is showing up in my newsfeed right now. That is not my content. But uh, what you're able to do is you're able to, right here where it says explore, if you click on see more, you're going to see a little tab here that says friends lists. And now I would go out on a limb and say the majority of people on Facebook are not fully familiar with the fact that this even exists. But it's a very, very powerful little uh, feature 
that is buried here under the, uh, the explore tab. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click off on friends list and what you're gonna see here is the ability to create your own little subset of friends lists within your own personal Facebook account. So what you're able to do is you're able to isolate the people that you want in different categories for whatever, you know, for whatever your purpose is. So right now you're looking at a number of different lists that I personally have got on my Facebook. Uh, most of these are client based at this point. Uh, you know, you see CAC marketing agency, elephant users, et cetera, et cetera. But the way that I used to use it when I was an agency and the way that Taylor used to use it when he was an agency and the way that so many CAC clients are currently utilizing it in their agencies is like this. Uh, what, we, what we do is we create lists of people that we want to have as potential referral partners. So what you do is you go to create list and it's just going to ask you to name the list and start plugging people in here. So let's just say, for example, you are looking for more, more loan officers, more real estate agents, more accountants, more attorneys, whatever the case is. A couple of things that you're able to do is uh, you know, start reaching out to people on the various social platforms. I would recommend if you're looking for people that are profession specific to start on LinkedIn, find their profile on LinkedIn, and then try and find them on Facebook. Send them that friend request on Facebook first. If they don't accept it, shoot it over on LinkedIn and then hey, let them know, hey, I shot, I shot you a friend request over on Facebook as well. I always find it better for uh, you know, potential referral partner relationships uh, you know, for us to kind of know each other on a little bit more of a personal level. And what you're able to do is you're able to put together these lists of people that all fall into uh, you know, whatever category you've put together. Now, why would you want to do that? Uh, one of the easiest ways for you to get yourself in front of a new potential referral partner is by building a social relationship with them online first, by building some social currency. And the way that you go about doing that is by liking their stuff, commenting on their stuff, sharing their stuff, uh, you know, basically giving them the warm and fuzzies and letting them know and feel that the content that they're putting out there resonates with you and that there's a lot of commonality. So what, you, what you'll wind up doing is you'll create a, a list of loan officers or a list of real estate agents or a list of whoever it is that you're trying to get yourself in front of and keep yourself in front of local business owners, uh, you know, what have you. And you'll have this list that you'll be able to dig into each and every day. So I'll click on this one right here, Soup Admin and CAC Coaches. There's not, no harm, no foul in here. And what you're going to see is you're going to see everybody who currently has a, a uh, an admin or moderator spot with us in Insurance Soup, and I'm able to keep up with the content that they're putting out on a daily basis. These are my coworkers, they're my employees, they're uh, my 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 closest friends and colleagues in the industry. Of course, I want to engage with them as frequently as possible and let them know that you know, hey, I'm thinking about you throughout the day. Uh, you know, hope you're thinking about me the same way. But from a referral partner standpoint, what this does for you is it creates little environments, little ecosystems within your personal Facebook that you're able to jump into throughout the day and make sure that you're not missing a beat on any of the people who's, uh, you know, whose trust you're looking to earn. Let's, let me chime in here real quick, Mike. Please the, do. The, the reason this is so important and we're all guilty of it is we'll add someone on Facebook or they'll add us and we'll engage Absolutely. them and then life, you know, gets in the way and we forget. It's a new relationship. So it's not someone that's on, you know, you're thinking about or you're laughing about your last engagement. It's someone that's very new, you know, to that, that Facebook world uh, when it comes to the, uh, that friend. So when you add them, it's a place where you're easily able to go, oh yeah, uh, let, let's go check on what Johnny is doing because he's a new friend. When you add them to this, they don't disappear. This is only going to show you who you put on that individual little news feed. Absolutely. And, and if we're being completely honest and we're calling a spade a spade, the majority of the referral partners that you're adding to your Facebook, you're not adding to your Facebook because you've got this overwhelming desire to get to know them. You're adding them because you've got this overwhelming desire to potentially do business with them, right? You're going to get to know them during that process. But when you are just adding re potential referral partners, to Taylor's point, it's not in your mind to be constantly checking up on their social media so that you can like on their stuff, comment on their stuff. And until you establish that good ed edge rank with them, until Facebook is recognized that this is someone who, when they put content out, you personally, the end user, you, the agent, want to see that content. Until Facebook's established that, that, uh, you know, that you're looking to see that content type of relationship, they're not necessarily going to continue to feed, uh, you know, feed you each and every post that your, uh, the people that you're looking to earn as referral partners is putting out into the wilderness. So, uh, all that being said, what you're able to do by creating these silos is you're able to stay on top of these referral partners that you're looking to earn. 
and you're able to continue to like their stuff, comment on their stuff, share their stuff, so that when you do build that social currency to a point where you feel comfortable reaching out and introducing yourself, and please, 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 I beg of you, please, do not start reaching out to these people until you've start building, started building social currency. If you reach out to them as a total stranger and ask them for a cup of coffee, anyone who's making money in whatever industry they're in is going to tell you no. And anyone who's not making any money in that industry is going to tell you yes and waste your time. So, so Mike, you're saying that the best strategy isn't to add the referral partners as a friend and then immediately spam their inbox? That's a much more succinct way of saying it than I, than I was just saying. But what I am begging of you is to not just go out there, grab new referral partners, add them to your friends list and start spamming and bamming them. What you want to do is you want to add them. You want to build that social currency through some of the methods that we've talked about today, whether it be through maximizing edge rank, whether it be through uh, you know, creating silos within Facebook so that you're able to stay on top of them and build that social currency. And from there, once you've established that little bit of back and forth, uh, and a little bit of reciprocity with them. Because what you're going to see too, what you're going to see, and I promise you this because I've done it a million times, is as you start to engage with them, the law of reciprocity starts to kick in and they're going to feel the need to start to uh, kind of chime in on your stuff too, particularly if there's a good vibe there. You know, if they, it, if they happen to wander over to your stuff because you've liked the last four or five posts, hey, who is this Taylor Dobby guy that likes all my posts? Now they wind up on your profile and they see, oh, you like hunting. Oh, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're into this, you're into that. And you have some commonalities. Now you're cooking with gas. And now that new referral partner who you were a virtual stranger to just days before is now seeing all your stuff and realizing that there's a lot in common here. And when you do reach out for that very first time, after you guys have kind of, you know, volleyed some likes and, and, and comments back and forth on some posts, it's not going to be weird. It's not going to be awkward. It's not going to be spammy. It's going to be, hey, Taylor, just wanted to reach out and, and, and formally introduce myself. We've been kind of liking and commenting on each other's posts for the last, uh, you know, for the last month or so. We got, we seem to have a lot in common. I figured I'd just reach out and say what's up. I appreciate you here on, uh, you know, I appreciate the stuff that you put out on uh, on Facebook. And boom, now you're off to the races with a normal human being conversation. Yeah, so, I mean, it goes back to before you do business with anyone or anyone does business with you, they want to know, like, and trust you. So what what social media allows you to do is really bridge that that no factor and that trust factor. You know, Mike and I. Before the first time we ever met in person, I could have told you his kid's names, his wife's name, where he is, uh, what his interests are, everything about Mike because of, of Facebook itself. And, and, what, really and, what, and what happened when I walked out the, those airport doors at Dallas Fort Worth uh, the very first time we met? I was a, a, a high five, a hug, and it was like we've hung out a hundred times. You hopped right out of the car and we, and, and we hugged. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, it, it allows you to bridge that gap. So when you're engaging, and you're interacting and you're letting them kind of see into your life and you're seeing into theirs. When you do have that conversation, there's something to discuss there. You've got some similarities. There's that interest. They know you, they, you know, they like you or else they wouldn't continue to engage. And now that trust is, is being built so that now you can get to the, you know, the business side of things. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, all that said, we're uh, we're a little bit pressed for time here. This isn't a typical uh, this isn't a, a typical presentation from Insurance Soup, so we are going to start to wind down here. Uh, if you are not already a member of Insurance Soup, do a search on Facebook. Just type in Insurance Soup, and you'll see uh, our group pop up. We've got a little bit over thirty one thousand members here, and every last member that joins the group is just as important as any other because you bring your own individual and unique insight and experience to the table. And that helps uh, keep the soup nice and hot and full. Uh, if you are uh, not already in soup, again, we uh, appreciate and look forward to you becoming part of the family. If you are in soup, well, here we are again, you're used to seeing us. But uh, either way, we have recently, as a way to kind of drive and fuel the industry the best we can from, uh, from behind the scenes, we have recently created a mini course that we are literally giving to everybody in insurance soup right now. Uh, the, the point of the little education that we put together was to help agents who are transitioning from an office setting to home. Uh, so it falls right in th into theme here with this virtual conference of, uh, of, of uh, you can't fail if you don't give up. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we were giving everybody in insurance, uh, insurance soup a number of different strategies and tools that they could implement uh, to get through this hard time, a little bit around organic marketing, a little bit about automation. Make sure that when you join Insurance Soup, you check the announcements and snatch that up. Yeah, Mike, show them real quick since you have it pulled up what, where the announcements are and the actual post uh, for the, the announcement. So all you're going to do when you join Insurance Soup is click announcements right here. 
in an ideal world, it'll be right at the top. It probably isn't. A couple of blog posts. Here's the conference. Got to find it. And also, if you're doing it from your mobile, uh, then it's just going to be the, the top post. You'll be able to click and drop down. Uh, okay. You'll be able to find it if, for some reason, it's not in the announcements now. We'll make sure that it is uh, here shortly. And, you know, take what, what you've learned on this call and take action. Uh, you know, the, the theme of you can't fail if you don't quit. When it comes to social media, it's being persistent. You can't hop on once a month and, and put a little bit of effort into it or, or reach out to that referral partner, you know, once every six months and try to create any kind of credibility or relationship there. It's, you've got to be persistent. You've got to, you know, dive in. Me personally, I dive into my little, you know, uh, personalized news feeds, you know, the segmented audience. I'll go in into the morning and some, engage, and then in the evening, I do the same. You know, with Facebook, there's prime hours of the day. The morning and the evening are going to be where you get the most activity, where, you know, that engagement's really going on. So that's when I like to do it. I don't just hop in randomly throughout the day. To me, it's a system. It's a process. It's a way of doing business. And so I treat it as such. You have to do it consistently, though. Don't give up because you're not seeing results right away. All, all that said, some of the stuff that we talked about today is are, are great ideas for you to begin laying down a foundation for when the future rebuild or, or reemergence of, uh, of when your business is really banging is going to take place. Uh, you know, fortunately, a lot of agents have been able to continue moving forward, but I, uh, I know that there are a lot of agents that as they, as they move to home have found themselves technologically a little bit stuck. Uh, struggling with having family around, struggling with homeschooling and all that kind of stuff. Right now, if you're a little bit slower or you find yourself on social media a little bit more than you normally do, what you've got the opportunity to do right now with these little strategies that we just laid on you guys today is uh, begin to plan for the future by establishing and building those referral partner relationships so that when your doors are open, when you are public facing again, and all these new referral partners whose relationships you've been building over the last number of months have begun to blossom, you're going back to the office with a horde of new referral partners that are looking to help you build your business. All awesome. that said. I hope you enjoyed the last uh, you know, 20 minutes with us. Uh, we are short on time. So I hope you enjoy the, the you know, speakers ahead and look forward to seeing you in insurance suit. Absolutely, appreciate you guys and uh, look forward to the next speaker. They're gonna be awesome. I told you be good. they'd be good. And they're freaking hilarious. Thank you so much, Insurance Soup, for doing that for us. Michael and Taylor, I love it. Thank you for being a part of this. Can't wait to see you on stage again in Vegas doing a PNC panel, doing a PNC breakout session, a part of the lunch. Everything we got going on, the experience is going to be leveled up from a PNC perspective because of the Insurance Soup. Awesome job. Thank you guys for being on this. They, they, if you don't quit, you can't fail, right? That's the theme. I'm going to keep saying it over and over because I don't want to see you quit. 92% of insurance agents fail. 8% nation was born because most of you fell. And you can't fail if you don't quit, right? And I don't want to see you quit. If you watch this video and you want to learn how to take a live call and transfer it from an opener to a closer, that video is for you. Click on it and I'll see you there. Again, I'm not sure what time you're watching this video, right? Intro, expert, control, qualify, transfer. This is how to effectively transfer a live call from an opener to a closer.